Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 107. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey, Norman. Hey, everybody. Hey, James. How are you? I'm fine. Doing okay. How are you? I'm doing fine. I have a new obsession. I think we already talked about that on the, what you might call this, um... Pre-show. Yeah, the pre-show. Thank you. Yeah, we talked about yeah. it in the pre-show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not going to turn this podcast into Magic the Gathering cast. I'm pretty sure there is one for that. Yeah, yeah, there's one for that. But you know, audience at home who are listening to this later, James do the live stream every Saturday after the episode, and that's when we usually record the episode. And if you want to join in and hear us banter about silly stuff, do come in right about um, after the episode from the Pony Show. Yes. <laughs> uh, but oh. anyway, also joining us today is Sketchy Sounds. Hello. Hey there, Sketchy. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. So, anything interesting happened today? Not really. Well, aside from... Well, you know, there, there was this one, uh, you know, show that was on earlier that I watched, which was uh, quite entertaining, but... Um... <laughs> oh, American Idol! Yeah, I love it too, man. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Why do I have a few guys? Simon <laughs> Conwell is best host! <laughs> Oh no, man! Pull up, duel. <laughs> uh, boys, we we know sketchy. No, no Ryan Seacrest. Ay, ay, ay. I, I don't know, even know who Ryan Seacrest is. It's, it's the pony episode. It was an awesome episode. We can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, let's save up for the review episodes. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic, gents. And the next topic is housekeeping. Just like last year, we have an award for you guys to vote for. Pick the best out of the best and vote for your favorite personalities. Links can be found in the show notes. So if you want James or Sketchy to win, vote for them. I'm posting the link into the show notes. Sorry, not the show notes, but the stream. Yes, go vote for Sketchy and James. Yay. Now, if you want your your least favorite people to win, just vote for them as well. Yay. Have your favorite people lose. <laughs> Indeedy. <laughs> Uh, boys. But, eh, <laughs> uh, just stream, you are mean. I don't want either of them to win. <laughs> <laughs> but, anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Cheese Sandwich Blind Back may be on its way. In Season 4, we got a very memorable character by the name of Cheese Sandwich, voiced by Weir Al Yankovic. Pictures have popped up on Taobao that a blind bag sized cheese sandwich may be on its way. Things can be found in the show notes. Who is hyped for this? I know I am. You know, if cheese sandwich uh, blind bag doesn't come cheese flavored, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> uh, I can already see it. Cheese sandwich blind bag with Pinkie Pie blind bag. Yay. If he doesn't smell like Gorgonzola, I'm going to be so, so disappointed. Like, come on. Still, it, it is a really good blind bag and a um, how would I put this? A uh, unique mole? So, yeah, all that for a blind bag? Woohoo! That's gonna be fun. Well, you have to take into account that these blind bags are made months in advance. So, and by the way, I have seen it. It looks exactly like cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, yeah, I mean, the hair, the everything. It's gotten to a point where they're going to slow down on the production of brushables and they're going to focus on the production of blind bags. Mm. Because uh, they are tiny, they are very show accurate, and they are super cheap. Mm -hmm. And that was the fan once, show accurate looking toys. Yeah. Like, uh, back then, it took like a couple of, what the hell, a couple of years for a show accurate blind bag to come up, to show up. Uh, nowadays, it's pretty much out on the same month. Mm, yep, yep. And also, um, this came from Taobao, and Usually what shows up on Taobao shows up in stores. Yeah, it it ends up happening. Mm -hmm. Like the Alicorn Rarity Plushie. <laughs> uh, I have no comment on that one. <laughs> it, you know what? I, I couldn't believe it, but I had one on my hands. Really? I, yeah. When I went to buy my Luna Plushie, I, I, not only I saw a Rarity Alicorn, I, I held it on my hands. Why did you buy it? Because I like Luna more. You know, you could just buy and like show it on stream. Like, aha, M.A. Larson called it. I was going to, but I was already getting a good deal for my Luna plush. I didn't want to get uh, to get greedy and get the rarity alicorn as well. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Besides, I don't live alone. Can you imagine what the people, what the people that I live with, will say if I come up, uh, get home, and like, hey guys, look, I got two plushies, not just one. Uh, and then they'll say, at least it's not a dakimakura. Oh God, don't, 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 <laughs> don't, don't go there, Norman. <laughs> Indeed. And what about you, Sketchy? I think it's nice that they're uh, that they're making a blind bag of. Um, that particular character. I mean, he was he was quite popular. Let's be honest. Um, plus, also, I know that uh, the folks that do customs of ponies and so forth, um, I dare say they will be quite delighted to have yet another uh, base model to work off of. <laughs> That's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, because they have to like make it from scratch. Yeah, I mean. I have a friend who makes customs, and he makes them from uh, brush balls and blind bags. And uh, one of the things he said is really difficult. Um, I mean, I have a custom of my OC sketchy sounds sitting on my desk that he made for me. And he said one of the things that was most difficult with him was uh, modeling the head and also making him the right size. Because an interesting thing, what he basically did for that was he, he took an apple jack brush ball and lengthened the neck, lengthened the legs, and remodeled the head. Uh, to get it right. Wow, that's a lot <laughs> of work. I remember seeing that uh, custom that you have, and the first thing I said was, "Oh, wow, he's tall." Mm. Yeah. Like, I said <laughs> the same thing about the custom that I said about you. Is that? Oh yes. my God, he's so tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be unexpected for me. I, I can't wait to meet you in person, Sketchy. Yes, I am probably going to. T- well, I will tower because I tower over everyone. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I hope you don't overtower me. <laughs> nah. Something tells me that I am going to tower you, Norman, so uh, Sketchy towers me. He's not going to tower you, he's going to mountain you. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, you, this always come up in my head. Whenever someone towers me, do a show you can. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just comes up automatically. Uh, wow, because, you're because Ryu versus Saga, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. why. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Sketchy. Thank you. Uh, now you make my day. I, mean, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next news. And the next news is Glenn Beck is in support of Grayson Bruce. Last week, we talked about Grayson Bruce, a nine-year-old boy who was bullied for his Rainbow Dash backpack and how school officials told him to leave the bag at home. After hearing the news... Glenn Beck, a television and radio personality, talked about the matter and was in full support of Grayson. At the end of his segment, he started a campaign where you were to take a picture with your MLP swag and tweet it to him using the hashtag StandWithGrayson. Links can be found in the show notes. Guys, what do you think? I think this is a very, very positive use of influence because... It's not often that we see this, that we see people who are in the media using the influence they have for a positive cause, or at least not often enough. And I know enough about the American media to know that Glenn Beck has been seen as a controversial figure every so often. And there are people, there are plenty of people out there that don't like him, but there's just as many that do, um, as I understand it. But... I think it is a very, very good and a very positive thing that someone who's in the uh, the eye of the media and works with the media has actually taken the time to say, no, hang on a minute, this is just, you know, stupid. And has basically taken a stand and said, you know, when someone is being bullied for something that they're bringing to school, it's talking to something that has been wrong with the education system, perhaps to a greater extent, science in general for a while, in that, you know, they're basically, you know, the school have basically been saying, oh, because this person, because this child and this kid's doing something that's getting them to be bullied, let's get them to stop doing it, rather than to, rather than doing the right thing and saying, you know, let's stop the kids who are being assholes towards this kid because of, just because of something minor. Mm-hmm. I really like how Glenn Beck put it uh, towards the end of the show. He said that, uh, he said, am I a fan of My Little Pony? No, but I am a fan of human decency. It's like you cannot tell people what to do and how to behave uh, of the way they are. It's like you cannot change people the way they are trying to do that. So I, I was really happy to see that. Uh, let's be fair. The very first years of the Brony fandom, the, the, the media has 
being full of uh, hatred, vitriol, and somewhat very narrow-minded understanding of what this fandom has and is all about. Like they focus only on the negative part because it's it's what sells. Mm-hmm. Uh, but lately, there has been kind of like a change of heart. There's still negative articles and all that, but there is also an overabundance of neutral to positive articles mm-hmm. and, and news pieces and, and reports and all that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like it. It's like, yeah, that's that's a wonderful way uh, way to see it. Mm, that's true. That's true. And I, I do like how, he, yeah, like you mentioned, how he said that he's not a fan, but he likes he is a fan of common decency and all that stuff. And the way he words things, the way he talks about this matter, he sounds really good. He knows what he's talking about, and you want to vote for him. <laughs> He sounds horrified. That's what he's, he sounds completely appalled by what the, the school has done. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't understand, he doesn't understand the, those actions. And to be honest, I don't understand those actions either. I it's mean, like, getting the backpack away is not going to fix the issue. I think I said it, I said this in last week's episode. Mm-hmm. It's going to make the issue worse. Kind of. But I do understand what the school was trying. It's a lazy way to do it. It's a quick fix, but yeah. Yeah, but in this, the thing, schools, really can't afford to be lazy with this kind of thing. In fact, schools should be the ones working the hardest on this kind of thing because think about it. A school is where children learn how to behave. It's where they learn the rules of society. It's where they learn, you know, it's granted, it's where they get their education on the match, on the skills they're going to need in daily life, such as reading and writing and arithmetic. But it's also where they get their education on social skills mm-hmm. and how to interact with other human beings. Now, yes. if the way that a school deals with the problem is to, to just go, use the quick fix route and just say, oh, let's just stop the thing that's causing this person to be bullied, that then sends a message to those doing the bullying that, hey, this is okay, it's okay for you to do this. And if someone else, you know, if someone is doing something that's making them a target, then they're the ones at fault. And that is pretty damned appalling when you think about it. And, and, you know, if he sounded horrified about it, then rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. He's completely in his right to be horrified because I was horrified as well. It was... It, it's such a terrible uh, situation mm-hmm. because of yeah. the lack of uh, the lack of respect, the lack of tolerance, and just how lazy the school was because, like you said, uh, school is not only to teach, uh, to, to learn how to read, how to do math, Whatever is a training ground for the la- for life. Like it's going to it's going to prepare you to the challenges that you're going to have to face in the future. And bullying is a big issue, and it has to be dealt with. Grayson has been super strong, mm-hmm. and Grayson has been super brave for for defending who he is and uh, and what he likes at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Because let, let's face it, not many people are able to cope with that kind of pressure. You may think, oh, it's just kids, it's children. But for children, that's their world, it's their whole universe. When their universe and, and the, the, their lives are like all around them, attacking them and, and uh, hurting them, that means everything to them. They see everything falling apart. They need to have support. They need to have help. Mm-hmm. What the school did was absolutely lazy. Well, and this true. completely ties with the next piece of news. Mm-hmm. And just to note, um, Grayson has been really strong and the way he words it and uh, his opinions about the matter when being asked by Glenn Beck, he was pretty, how do I put this? Mature. Yeah, mature and surprised at his answer. It's like he's been listening to podcasts, like the Brony podcast, like my hours or Brony time or even Bronyville. Like he's yeah. been listening to them and whatever he said, I can um, imagine him hearing us or any of the other podcasts talk about it on the matter. Like, it's just a show. You shouldn't take it seriously. But anywho, let's move on to the next news topic in correlation with the backpack. Rainbow Dash backpack is welcome back to school. After the incident involving Grace and Bruce and his backpack, school official has regretted their decision and are in full support of Grayson bringing the backpack back to school. Wow. That's a tongue twister. Links can be found in the show notes. So, yay! Rainbow Dash is welcome back to school. So she can finish her education. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess she wasn't too cool for school after all. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> I am very happy to see that the school decided to backtrack and, and take a step back on what they did and acknowledge the mistake. They, mm-hmm. I, 
I didn't read further into it, but I know that they are now researching the issue in seeing how they can deal with bullying in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing is here, in any standard situation or any standard time, the situation is going to be like this. Uh, in a normal situation where this news did not hit the media, okay, things done. File case, okay, put it in the done file. All right, done. Let's move on to the next thing. But since this was covered by not one media, but almost everyone, ABC News... Um, it Zen was Flags. worldwide. Yeah. So that's why they got a lot of flack. And I heard from uh, Bruce's mother, Noreen Bruce. I think she heard that the school got a lot of hate. What do you mean by that? A lot of phone calls telling them, the school, how, you know, all those kind of bad calls. Oh. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, the school doesn't really deserve it. Like, their actions at the beginning were kind of understandable and, like I said, the easy way out. It's a good, it's a quick fix, but quick fix usually don't do the job. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be the one to defend the school because what they did was pretty stupid, but they Mm. don't deserve to be threatened. They don't deserve to be called. They don't deserve to be assaulted in any way, shape or form. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's like, that's getting low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, when dealing with this kind of situation, you have to be respectful, you have to be careful, you have to be mindful. You cannot let yourself be guided by your emotions, which in that moment... I know it's kind of stupid for me to say, oh, human beings, just be be cool about it, be cool, level-headed, because we're very, we're very easy to get hotheads uh, over any situation that upsets us. However, you need to be mindful, you need to be level-headed when dealing with a situation like this, or else... You're going to be hurting a lot of people. First of all, the ones you're attacking, and second, yourself. This doesn't benefit anybody. So, yeah, you know what? They shouldn't have made those those hurtful uh, comments, uh, phone calls. Mm, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's completely uncalled for. Yeah, I mean, the school was just doing their job, even though it's the wrong thing to do or yeah. not the right action, but still. I don't know about you, but I'm studying and preparing myself to be a teacher. So most of my life I spend it in the company of teachers, knowing how they do their job and learning what they what they do, what they do, and how they organize everything. You don't have to forget that the school is run by human beings, and human beings by nature are flawed. They are going to make mistakes. They are going to screw up. They cannot help it because this situation was, to be honest, I never heard of a situation like this before. At least not to the extent. Oh, yeah. Uh, so how do you react in a situation that you have not been prepared for in teaching school? Like, how do you, how do you deal with it? So you need to learn. That's why they, they are learning. Even when you're a teacher, you're learning new things. This is why I don't blame the school. or I'm not angry at the school. I'm angry at the bullies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the bullies are... That's not a word. I mean, yeah. But I'm not angry at the school. So, yeah, don't hate those guys. They're just doing their job. Yeah, this is the thing. It's an interesting thing when it comes to bullying and so forth, is that it has to be the people who are the uh, the older generations. It has to be them that start putting a stop to it. Because an interesting point that gets raised very often, and is very true, is that children aren't born with prejudice. They They aren't born with an innate hatred or dislike of other people of... You know, say, for example, of the opposite gender or a different color skin or a different or different ethical beliefs or whatever. Children aren't born with those prejudices. They learn them. They learn them from the people around them. So it has to be us. It has to be us folks of the current generation that are, you know, the ones old enough to be raising children and teaching children. We have to be the ones that teach them, you know, open mindedness. Because if we don't do that, then they're just going to learn to be closed-minded and prejudiced themselves. And mm-hmm. the situation's never going to change. So it has to be us that does it. Well, yeah. That's really yeah. true. No, yeah, that is absolutely true. Teaching tolerance, teaching respect, and teaching... Most of all, just be level-headed. Be mindful. Be careful. I know too well that saying the, 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 the wrong thing at the wrong time because you're being led by your emotions ends up in very poor... Uh, consequences Hmm. and sometimes you won't even be able to fix them so you have to be careful with what you say at all times and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about me like two or three years ago I'm talking about me about next week for example (laughs) so you have to be careful all the time Mm -hmm. yep yes 
Yeah. Anywho, let's move on to the next news topic and the final one at that. It's a sad one, guys. It's a sad one. Gen Animation got cnd would by Hasbro. If you have heard of Gen Animation, you have seen his amazing videos. Unfortunately, we have some bad news for you all. Starting from today, March 21st, everything pony related on Jen's YouTube page has been removed at the request of Hasbro. Hasbro have sent Jen a CND letter requesting him to take down everything related to My Little Pony, except an announcement by Jen and Shady Vox, fan voice for Button Mesh, for their next move. Links can be found in the show notes. I, uh, honestly, I am really sad about this. I really don't know how to react about this. I'm going to let everyone on the call talk, and then I will give my two mm-hmm. cents. I I think it's a tad upsetting that this has happened. But at the same time, I, well, and I hesitate to use the line, but I totally saw this coming. And the reason I totally saw it coming is not because, you know, it's a case that I, I hold no ill intent towards the animations because I know he works very hard on what he does. I love the stuff he does. Um, and it's, oh, hold on a minute. Uh, breaking news, guys, because I've literally just been looking into this and checking stuff out. Something new has just popped up. Wow, this is awesome. Uh, Mike Vogel. CEO of Hasbro? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he has literally just tweeted, Hey, every pony, read your concerns about fan work. I will go look into it. Promise. So, um, yeah, Hasbro Studios VP of Development, Mike Vogel, he's just tossed that message up in response to the overwhelming amounts of people asking about the clan animations takedown. Now, while this doesn't guarantee anything, it is quite awesome to see someone with a title like that digging around for what's going on. Well, um, this is, I'm just reading directly through off of EQD here. Um, if the EQD mailboxes are any indication, a lot of you are pretty worried about what's going on in the fan work arena. Hopefully we can get to the bottom of it soon. Can't imagine if we advertising on something innocent like but ma- Button Mash would really be something they're gun home to take down. Um, Molly was understandable, but Jan's stuff hasn't been inappropriate in the slightest so far. Cross your fingers for legal free future. Now, that does actually sig nicely into what I was going to talk about, because, I mean, this is the thing. I figured something like this might happen sooner or later, and not because, you know, Hasbro have a dislike for all the fan work and everything, because they don't. Um... In fact, a lot of it they love. As is always the case when these things happen and when these things are brought up, the reason that Hasbro do this at all, the reason that they do any of these CNDs or takedowns at all, is not because they want to, and not because they want to hurt the fans or get rid of the, the, you know, frankly brilliant free marketing that they're getting out of it. It's because under the legal system that they're governed by, because of where they do business, they have to. It's not Hasbro or anyone that's at fault. It's the fault of some very archaic and badly written laws that exist over in the US that govern copyright and trademark. And it's basically the case that if they're made aware of work that infringes on their copyright or is a threat to their trademark they are legally obliged to go and take action in regards to it, or they might lose the rights to their trademark. And then that would then open the door for anyone else to, you know... To name My Little Pony. To, well, well, not just that, to just, to make use of the, of their Mm. creatives, to make use of their work and not have to pay them Mm. for it, because then there'd be a precedent already set. Mm. It's a world of, you know legal rights and regulations and so forth. But it's unfortunately, it's something that they have to abide by if they want to make any money. And Hasbro is a business. They are out to make money um, at the end of the day. But it's, it just so happens to be the case that the place where they're doing business to make their money has some really, really stupid laws in place. Um, and this is just, it's further indication that the copyright and trademark laws that we ha- that are in place in places like the US, in Canada, probably even here in Britain as well, need to be looked at and need to be rewritten hmm. because th- they need to be a lot more abiding of derivative works. Because, I mean, this basically is a derivative work. Um, 
there's, there's no two ways about it. It's pretty cut and dried. I mean, you look at it and you can say, yeah, that looks an awful lot like My Little Pony. Now, um, you know, the sensible, logical human thing to say in regards to that would be, well, you know, do Hasbro have a problem with you doing this? Um, and if the answer to that is no, then great. You can carry on doing it. And, you know, you know, what's your intent for doing this? Are you making money off of it? No, you're not. You're obviously just doing this because you really love the show and you're a fan of it and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, the law doesn't look at it in a logical human perspective. The law looks at it purely from a perspective of viciously and rigorously protecting something that's been trademarked or uh, had a copyright put on it. And unfortunately, in this case, that means, you know, that regardless of your intent, whether it be wholesome or malicious, the the law treats them just the same. Um, it doesn't take into it doesn't take intent into account at all, and it's just like, well, you know, you're doing this that could be a threat to copyright, and you know, we're just going to have to shut you down. <laughs> to put it in very short terms, this is why we can't have nice things. Uh. Hmm. You also have to take into account how the the things that have been taken down by Hasbro have been really, really popular. Like, uh, Fighting is Magic, super popular, uh, as Princess Molestia was really popular as well. And Gen Animations Animations, they were insanely popular. And I think Hasbro decided to take action against those things because they saw that as a threat. At uh, one point, it actually gets... I don't know if this got so bad, but I'm pretty sure that it was getting to the point where things were getting more popular than the actual show. Like, fan-made content can get actually... In some time, in some cases, it can get more popular than the actual TV show. But there has been many cases of Hasbro acting against uh, fan-made content, and the the actions have been really benign. Like, I remember there was one Pony Maker, uh, Pony Plush Maker, that was contacted by Hasbro. Uh. And at first, it, it was thought that she was not allowed to keep doing and selling her plushies. But it turns out that they just wanted her to remove the prices from her DeviantArt. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Would that be White Dove Creations? We, we, yeah? we talked yes. about her before, and yes. Well, that one was because Hasbro... Um, okay, some of the reasons that you state... Uh, some of the... Uh, brands or products that you stated out, stated out, James, like uh, Fighting is Magic, Princess Molly, and also Jan. Uh, the other two were kind of giving a bad name to the brand. They're kind of uh, putting the brand in a bad light because, okay, Fighting is Magic. It's ponies beating the crap out of each other. Hasbro does not condone that. It's not what Hasbro does. It's really skewing our brand. It's really spoiling our brand. So, no, we have to stop it. Please stop. And you're making money. Please stop. Princess Molly, do I need to go on further with that? The reason why they took down Princess Molestia was because it was kind of like defamation of character. They didn't want to have a character so um, popular being related to Princess Celestia. If I may interject on this, Norman, um, you are incorrect oh, really? on your first because the Fighting is Magic team were making no money off of their yeah. project. The only they, reason... Oh, guys, they, no, no, no. Uh, let, let, let's sketch it finish. Right. And then I will... I will I put an extra on that, but it completely... Okay, go for it. Sorry. They, they, um, they made it very clear from the get-go that they would not take any donations or anything like that whatsoever. But, I mean, in regards to what you're saying overall, Norman, um, I don't think it's even necessarily a case that Hasbro didn't approve of what people were doing with their brand. And, okay, fighting is mad, like, I could sort of see that, but it wasn't particularly violent. Well, it wasn't it wasn't bloody or gory or anything like that. They specifically avoided that and kept it to like only cartoon violence. Last year, I can see why they went after that because yeah, it wasn't a very wholesome thing. But um, mm. what Dan Animations is doing, um, pretty much none of that was uh, was there's the really. I don't think there's anything really objectionable about it. Um, my take on why they went for these things specifically is because these things, I'd say it is more a case of popularity in terms of these are the things that were most noticeable, most prominent, and therefore when they were then taken down would have, would have the most impact in terms of 
sending a message to say anyone that was considering of hijacking the brand for their own purposes. With that said, I don't think Hasbro felt at all threatened by the popularity of these things in terms of them competing against their own product. Because let's be honest, um, none of those things shared, like for example, none of those things were competing for viewers because none of those things had stuff going out at the same time as the show. Also, none of those things have products out in supermarkets or anything that people might be spending money on. I think it's literally just a case of them ha having to abide by the laws that are in place because if they don't, they could lose the the rights to their own property. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only reason that they're doing it is because they they are their hands are basically tied by the current archaic and ridiculous laws that are in place in the country where they've chosen to do business. Regarding what you said about, about fighting this magic, it did have to do with money. Uh, I will I will tell you why. Um, I don't know if you remember, a year ago, Fighting is Magic was competing to be part of EVO. Mm -hmm. And that was based on donations. Basically, the video game that got the more donations, all of that going to charity, will be picked to play. And among the games were well, classic like, classics like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, uh, a Super Smash Bros. Brawl, or I think it was Melee, I don't remember very well. And among those games was Fighting is Magic. And Fighting is Magic got the most amount of donations. Someone, someone in the fighting game community saw this, and they were like, oh yeah, then I'm going to report you to Hasbro. Hasbro saw that, and they asked the Fighting is Magic team to take it down. And... I tell you, this has happened. This keeps happening because it happened before. It happened a few days ago. Um, okay, not to get into the very adult territory, but I'm just going to tell you there is a website called Furry Dakimakura oh. that sells that sells Dakimakuras. Dakimakura is the Japanese equivalent of a body pillow. Okay, and a few days ago they got a report from someone who complained that uh, they were selling anthropomorphized. Uh, are 34 versions of Friendship is Magic characters. And Hasbro issued a letter to Furita Kimakura asking them to take down the MLP designs, and they had to. They actually took down those designs, and those designs, they didn't have the names of the characters on the show, they didn't have the likeness of the characters on the show, and they literally were okay within the bounds of uh, copyright use, and they took those down. So it's not just Hasbro defending their property, it's also the people going to Hasbro and basically saying, hey, 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 they are selling pony porn. You should do something about it. And Hasbro is like, you know what? We should. <laughs> Stamp of C&D. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. However, I can see why people are worried. I am worried. What if all of a sudden they say fun art and artwork is not okay to be published, to be made online? I mean, I will be able to keep doing commissions because I also do uh, furry artwork, but it's going to be a big bummer if all of a sudden we cannot do pony fan art, regardless of how clean it is. Yeah, so, so now here's the real question for Hasbro. What is okay? Is fan art okay? Is it not okay? Because for years, fan art has been there. I mean, Disney has not been uh, chasing down people who make fan art. Yeah, in fact, Pixar makes context of people doing fan art uh, of their movies, and the best fan arts, they contact those artists to, be, to bring them into their teams. Yeah, even with Magic, if I'm not mistaken, um, there's a contest of people who do fan art for Magic. Uh, Wizard of the Coast called him. Konami did contests to design monsters for Silent Hill, and they picked the best designs. Uh, uh, Electronic Arts, the guys who do... Dead Space. For the second game, they were co they were collecting fan art and artwork, and they, they they wanted to they wanted the fans to create fatalities and <laughs> like attacks to include in the video game, and they picked the best one and they included in the game. Yeah. So fan art is something that companies embrace. Yeah. It will be really really stupid for Hasbro to decide and go against fan art. So there must be something else. There must be something else working in, working behind there mm -hmm. that has made Jan give up all of his animated work. I think the day when Hasbro goes after fan art, I don't think that's the day that's ever going to come. Mm. Because, let's face it, there is way, way, way too much that we'd have to go after. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah. as you've already mentioned there, James, 
no other company's done that. Not yeah. even Disney, who are notorious for their defense of their trademark and copyrights. Okay. Yeah. Has ever done that. Mm-hmm. So I don't think Hasbro is ever going to do that. I would say the fan artists, the people who do fan art, fan work of this fairly static in nature, I think they're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for example, look at Pixel Kitties. Uh, Pixel Kitties not only does uh, weekly comics, but she also works with Willow Fine. Uh, Fine, and she has a contract with Hasbro to do designs of their brand for, for that website. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. okay, it's a, person that, uh, it's a person that has a contract, and in that she is legally okay in those grounds. But... I mean, if it's possible for a fan artist to do that, then there is nothing to worry about. Uh, the guys who did Children of the Night, they haven't been contact- contacted by Hasbro. Uh, the guys who... Uh, uh, Pika PT, good friend animator of mine, he hasn't been contacted by Hasbro either. And he does animation. So it's, it's like there is definitely something that works in there that we don't know at the time of recording this podcast. Mm, and I really want to know more about it. So I am now going to, going to follow Mike Bogle and, and, and see what's going on because I want to know what he has to say. Yeah, here, here's a crook and dagger theory for me because this is nothing official. This is just my, um, as we put it in a quote, hit canon of the situation or theory, as you <laughs> put it. Some whistleblower reported to Hasbro and Hasbro couldn't ignore it because they were sent a letter, a registered letter. So once that's out there and Hasbro receives it, they have to take action. That's pretty much how it works with US laws. Mm. I would say that's probably what's been going on a lot of the time with these sorts of things, is simply that there have been people who have simply gone and reported these things or have gone and blown the whistle on them and said to Hasbro, oh, look, these people are using your, yeah, you know, your intellectual property. And, you know, because of the laws that are in place... Hasbro are then obliged to act on those on that stuff, whether they like it or not. I have to say, if I if I was someone working in uh, in Hasbro's legal department, I think I'd be heartbroken every so often when one of these letters came in. I was like, so now we have to go and take down this amazing bit of work because we've been taught, because someone has sent us a letter saying that this exists and it's using our property. I mean, think for a moment how heartbreaking that must have been when. They had to go and do that for fighting his mad leg, for example. To compliment what you're saying, Sketchy, what I, what I said before about the school teachers being people and being flawed, the same goes for the people that work at Hasbro. Oh, yeah. They're human I, beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're human beings. And I'm fairly sure a lot of them know fairly well what the fan community is doing and all the amazing things that are going on out here. Um I would not want to be someone working in their department that's responsible for having to send out these letters because it must be absolutely heartbreaking when something like this comes in and it's like, what's been targeted this time? And I would not have wanted to be there when uh, when the letter about Jan Animations came in because that must have been absolutely horrible for them. Mm-hmm. Because I'm fairly sure they know full well what sort of stuff Jan has done and the kind of amazing work he's turned out. And I dare say they were somewhat devastated by the fact that they then have, were obliged to go and issue him a takedown notice. One thing that media has done over the years is they, they managed to vilify the image of the corporate suits. They, they managed to turn them into a bunch of heartless, cold-minded, uh, soulless uh, douche nozzles that only care for the money and have no no other views whatsoever. Now, this might be true in Wall Street, but I don't think that people at Hasbro that hire those that work on DHX that put together these wonderful these wonderful looking episodes, and I cannot imagine them going at uh, going at Jan's email or like YouTube account because they they send him the the, the CND through YouTube because he doesn't have his email up publicly. Mm-hmm. And I cannot imagine them going like Moriarty saying, <laughs> we're going to take down his animation and we're going to have money, money, chaos, money. <laughs> no, they, they are not like that. They are not like that. I agree with Sketchy when he said that uh, they are heartbroken when they have to take down this mm-hmm. because they are forced by these archaic laws that 
just force them to defend their own IP because there is no other way for them to do that. Do you do you think if there was no option, if there was an option, do you think they will take this route? They so wouldn't take this route. They will try and work it out with them and they will follow whatever steps they have to follow to keep the original, uh, the, the fan-created work still up and going. But right now they just can't. Mm-hmm. It's, it's impossible for them. Yeah, that's true, that's true. The, the law as it is right now, it's really black and white. It's really hard for them not to ignore it because if they ignore it, they'll lose it. So now they are forced to acknowledge it and just because it's the law, they have to. And I do yeah. remember this. Um, Jason Jason Thiessen, um, I think Bronyville said this. When he was at a convention and Fighting His Magic was there, he played it and he was hyped. I think most of the people from Hasbro or working with Hasbro or working on the show are really excited for the game. Yeah, I mean, even Lauren Faust said that she wanted to play the game when it came out. Yeah, yeah let's not forget who Lauren Faust is working with nowadays. Mm, yeah. Disney. <laughs> She's working with Disney guys. Yeah. No, no. I mean, in terms of let's not uh, forget, oh, okay. she's working with the main six development. Oh, okay, that's, okay, that's yeah. True. But that's because yeah, because she is of, working with main six. Yeah. That, I mean, was, come on. That was because of the whole takedown that she felt um, sorry for them because the game was well produced. Because okay, here's the thing: the people at main six they made the game as a fighting game first. Pony came second, and. If you notice the re-release of the game that came out, the Tribute Edition, that was not um, kept in mind. It was really unbalanced. It was fun to play, but well, it felt a bit off. However, you have to remember, uh, yes, to, to, to move away from talking about fighting is magic. On the, on the matter of people to, um, having to do something after they are uh, given a C&D, mm-hmm. Uh, JJ had to move away from Princess Molestia and now he's doing his own uh, adventure comic that it's already been released. Mm. He's doing it with the help of Calpin and MJ123 and it's looking awesome. Oh. Uh, the guys that fighting is magic, they had to move on. So now they are doing their own, uh, uh, own original IP mm. and it's, it's going to be a completely new game. Mm. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's going to be up for sale on Steam or whatever because they can totally sell that. It's a, brand new IP with new characters and new stuff. And Jan and, and Shady Box, they are moving on to other things as well. I mean, the thing is that the people that are getting CNDs from Hasbro are thankfully the most, some of the most creative, uh, inventive people in this community. And they have other things to do aside from Pony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, news on Shady Box and Jan, uh, most of the script that they use for ponies uh, about the mesh adventures, they can be still carried over because they're not locked into one. For example, if X character name Button Mesh change it to Bob and his um, sweetheart darling, uh, Sweetie Belle, change it to Maggie. Who knows? I mean, yeah, it, yeah. Basically, changing the characters' names and you can still have an ongoing story. But that's because they have very good writing. That's the thing: is that if you're creative, you can totally bypass the C and D by making a, by creating something brand new. Oh, true, 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 true. I mean, it's all fun and games. And once the law comes in, everybody takes their balls back home. But anyway, I, I feel depressed, guys. So do I'm not. I'm not feeling depressed, but I'm feeling maybe a bit tired talking about this yeah. subject. <laughs> I'm depressed because Jared Animation did good animation. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, he did, he, did, he did really good animation. He did a great work. But, hey... Don't be sad, don't be down. Mm-hmm. Personally, I am more interested on in knowing what Michael Bogle has to say oh, about yeah. this topic. So I'm going to keep my eye closed on it. Mm-hmm. Same here, same here. Oh, on the bright side of life. <laughs> do, 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 do. So Amy... Yeah, I mean, it's not the, it's not the end of the world, Yeah, that's guys. true, that's true. I mean, Mike Vogel looking into this, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. So, anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs. My shout-out goes to you, James. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me about ponies. I just have nothing better to do with my life, so I guess I can indulge. <laughs> and thank you, Sketchy. Thank you for coming on and also talking to me about ponies and educating me. No problem. And to you, live stream chat on James' stream. Thank you for being there and talking to one another and making us feel welcome. James? Well, I want to give a shout out to you guys, of course. Uh, we're all a bunch of. That's not a 
word? Yeah, goddamn. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for brightening my Saturdays. Uh, even more so, uh, despite having ponies, a lot better to have friends. Yep, true, true. And thank you so much for the people on my stream chat that bring me so much joy with their uh, their questions, standing there, watching me draw, uh, putting up with my... That's not a word! Whenever I rant or say silly things. And I think, yeah, that's that's... Pretty much about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I enjoyed last week's episode where you didn't curse. Sweetie was going to have a lot of work on this episode now. But that's because, you see, I didn't curse because I get really shy when I am talking with new people. <laughs> but now that I have a lot of confidence talking with you guys, I just I just swear like a truck driver, so I cannot help it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you know, I own my keep, I know. <laughs> Yeah, besides, last week you didn't work, sweetie, but I'm giving, you so- I- I'm giving you some work. You need to get some food on the table, you know that? The things I put up with on this podcast. Shut up or I will not give you any lubricant. <laughs> and what about you, Sketchy? I would just like to give a shout out to, well, you two both for having me along on the MBS show again. It's always a pleasure. Um, to the guys in the live stream chat as well, uh, pleasure to have you guys listening in. Um, and to the sorted friends of mine out there on the wide world web, mm-hmm. um, who are, uh, who may be listening in or who are chatting to me right now. Yeah. Shout out to you guys as well. Yay. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, contact us at nbashow at gmail.com. And if you'd like to email us personally, emails are in the show notes. You can also reach me on Twitter. You can also reach the show on its own Twitter feed. Cool. Uh, at the NBS show. There where you can find Sweetie Bot talking about why her life is a living nightmare when editing James's um, curse words. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I could go on all day about that. Uh, yes, indeed. We we know, sweetie. We know, sweetie. And also, um, me, you can find me at Norman Sanzo. I usually tweet about toys, food, and kitty cats. Kitty cats are cute. And what about you, James? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, James Lower Dash Cork. Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. And you can check my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And what about you, Sketchy? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sketchy underscore sounds. You can find me on Tumblr on sketchysounds.tumblr.com. And I also run Ask Britannia, which is the mascot for Buck. That's uh, aspritannia.tumblr.com. Uh, remember, it's one T and two N's. Uh, you can also find me on Film Fiction as Sketchy Sounds. That's with a space in the name. And you can also find me on DeviantArt as Sketchy Sounds without a space or an underscore in the name. So, yeah, you really cannot get away from me no matter where you go. <laughs> you're always watching. You're always watching me. <laughs> <laughs> you are everywhere, Sketchy. Everywhere. Like, sketchy is watching me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. Anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. Last time I checked, I was still scarcely sounds. And he is watching me. Bye, guys. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night, everybody. You may call it a crash, I call it a flying. Here to perform in this deserted island. Jealous and the leave a pony smiling. You need to chill, cause you know it's who I am. Out here, no cell phone service. With a blank stare, it'll serve its purpose. Not worthless, look under the surface. Clear blue seat, and these ponies are shirtless. Spectacular, but you don't speak tree. The vernacular, you know what beats me. Never mastered words, it isn't easy. To leave a wreck afterwards. And Teddy, please, please, I need a beat. We need an atlas, I need a drink. But we're rather mapless. Had an impasse, pass me the trackless. Trackless, in fact, so I lack this, I blast this. Not known to be patient. So far from home, from our equestrian nation. Miss a standing ovation. Miss the lights in the stage, what a grand innovation. Paint his face, heavy, I drop it. Smell in place, don't know you got it. Don't always get what you're hoping for. More worried than a bat with a joker more. But we're still breathing. And the sunset is setting so sweetly this evening. No, you're thinking of leaving. But though it seems hopeless, I hope you believe me. It's an issue, not insurmountable. Never was a test, no one holds you accountable. Can't advance in life without stress. And the word we defeat, let me teach you a lesson. Life is full of problems, life is full of hurting. But it's hard just to solve when your mind isn't certain that you're on the right path, right track. What's that? Don't know where we are, but I know where we're at. Galapagos Islands, I'm here with you. Don't pick sides when it's only we two. Don't brood. 
what did I do? You're my best friend, there's no need to argue. Have a good time, I don't need your permission. But time will crawl by when work's been inefficient. No, but you're grabbing to go and get fishing. But tabby, tabby, stop and just listen. We'll carry on, somebody gets you. So sing your song, the melody will let you get you where it's gone. Celeste will bless you, new day will dawn, we'll focus on our rescue. One, two, three, tabby, dance with me. Though we're lost at sea, the press is just no way to be. Come on, let's stay. When there's deserted island Jealous cause I leave a pony smiling You need to chill cause you know just who I am Out here no cell phone service With a blank stare but don't serve its purpose Not worthless, look under the surface Clear blue sea and these ponies are shirtless Who is hyped for this? I know I am James? Uh, I was waiting to give Sketchy his turn right. And then I will I, I will go next All right. uh, I'm actually a little sidetracked Reading some stuff at the moment, go on <laughs> Yeah <laughs>